What is going on guys? Deliver this all gaming with my review of Slaughter Online Season 2 Episode 5. And this episode right here, we got a pretty cool fight, but overall the episode it was definitely simple. So this review it might not be that long, but I will try to make it go as long as possible because I do want to cover everything and not mess out a single thing. And so the episode itself, it starts off with Kirito and Sinon. They are still, you know, riding that motorbike and they actually make it to the place where they have to sign up. But the thing is, they only have five minutes left to do that. So when they walk inside, we see now that there are these terminals that they can use to sign up. And we see that like when Kirito, when he was doing it, they actually wanted him to put in his real life information. But he also had the choice not to do that. But if he didn't do that, he'll be uneligible to win any of these, you know, like big prizes. And so we see now that he was tempted to do it, but he really could, but he really could make a choice. And when Sinon was done, and even asked him, you know, if like he was finished, we see now that at the last second he just made the choice to not put his real information in there. And I do wonder why was he so nervous about that? Because like, I'm thinking maybe he didn't want he did not want people to find out, like find that out. I'm not really sure because to me, we all know Kirito got some skills. So if if he could have went in there and won some prizes, then he might as well just make the most of his time in this game because I'm pretty sure you know after he stops uh, Def Gun then he'll probably stop playing this altogether but you know who knows and and so now that like after that we have um we, we have we have uh, Kirito and Sinon they were like talking of course and then they were and they were like they were like walking and talking and we see now that eventually they they like come to kind of like this club like nighttime area but it's pretty much like a club and we just see that all these people like they were there and of course they are also participants you know in the battle of bullets and we see now that like most of them I'm pretty sure that every single one of them they had their weapons out there and we see that when Sinon and Kirito when they went into you know the dressing room seen on here was like calling them idiots because by people seeing their weapons then they can easily be countered so that right there it was definitely not a good strategy on their part but we see now that like seen on here she is still thinking that like Kirito is a girl and so she actually you know undresses in front of him because they, they need to change into you know their like battle gear especially Kirito who still needs to equip his stuff and so at first we had Kirito looking away and we have seen all you know just like wondering like what is he panicking about and that right there is like when he finally, when he finally told her the truth that you know that uh that he is a guy she is just shocked because especially with that avatar it is definitely hard to believe that but now we see that like after you know after she had like that fact she got really you know like really angry and she actually you know like smacked him and that right there was like hilarious but after that we see now that they have both changed and we have seen on who was like who was mostly upset for like most of the episode after that but we have her walking around and we have Kirito following her and like and we have a few times where like Sinon you know told him to like stop following her but he couldn't because he had no idea what to do and, and you know to make things worse he didn't know anybody here except for her and so now when, when they finally take a seat we see now that like Sinon she is still holding like this grudge but we also see we also learn like learn more about her because to her you know like because the real world and this game you know they are so different it feels like that that the uh the scene on you know and like in this game and the real life one they're like two different people and, and we also learned that like Kirito he was actually pretty impressed with like how good the Japanese was in this game because it is made by an American company but they have the Japanese people working on their server so that would explain why but now they were sitting down and they were talking some more because like Kirito like finally broke her we see now that that he knows her name and and like and Sinon was actually planning on you know taking him out because we see now that that they are in the uh they are but they're both in the same block like they're in the they're, they're in the uh the f block and i do believe kirito's number was 35 while Sinon was only 12. so so both of them will only meet if if they uh if they made it to the finals because this right here you know after Sino has explained the rules we like pretty much learn you know what, what the whole thing is about 
where this right here, like, like a qualifier, and he like make it to the finals because you need five wins to make it to the finals. And if you do that, you're like automatically guaranteed an entry into the main tournament. And you and you saw, you know, like the uh, the, the blockers that they had, and especially with like Kirito's like having such a high number, and and like and his numbers were like pretty high on the second on on the second half. So it, it goes to show you how many players are in this. But uh, but but we had them talking, and then out of nowhere, we have uh, Shino's friend shows up. You know, it's the one that like she had met with in real life, and we see now that like even though he did not participate in the game, he came there to watch her. And so now we see that like seen on here, she was just so dead on, you know, taking out Kirito, like kind of getting some payback. And we saw Kirito, you know, kind of like egging her on and that right there, which is making her more and more upset. And we even saw her friend, you know, even he began upset. And that right there, you know, kind of raised a red flag to me at least, because to me, like at first I was thinking that this guy could be Dev Gun, especially, you know, from the way he acts sometime. But then later on the episode, that right there is kinda of making me doubt my judgment. But I will get into that. But now we see that the uh, that the time is going down because they did get an announcement and we see now that that uh that Kirito he was like teleported into this area and that is when he finally like you know equipped his weapons. And so we see now that uh like once he actually you know listens to the game against his opponent, I believe his name was like um, Gimaru. Probably not saying that right, but we see now that they were like fighting and kind of like this ruined, like ruined, you know, like broke down ruined place. And we also learned that like every time, you know, like some somebody matches are going to be, you know, with like a random setting at a random time and with like some kind of random weather. So so nobody, you nobody fighting right now will like have the same kind of match. It will always be different. But Kirito here, he actually got pretty lucky. But now we see that like when he when he finally gets face to with his opponent, his opponent here at like obviously had the upper hand at first because we saw this guy already bringing out like an SMG and we saw that that, that he did you know graze Kirito with like a few bullet with, with, with a few bullets and we also saw like two of them at one point actually hit his leg. And so after a bullet had grazed up, you know, Kirito, he actually didn't take that much damage, but he obviously, you know, could have counter. And so for like, so like most of the match at first, he was kind of like hiding, but it was then he like came up with this, uh, with this strategy and it actually paid off because like once he had charged in, you just saw all these red lines are pointing at him and most of them, most of them were going to hit. Like we had like three in the chest, like, uh, like, like, like two in the lower torso and one in the face for a headshot. And that right there would have been an instant kill. But we saw now that when this guy was like taking the shots, because at first, like, Kirito, he was like concentrating so hard that he like picked up on the movement, you know, that he was making. Because this guy, you know, had like some leads on his head for like camouflage and the sound and the sound that they made, it like, it let this guy know, you know, like, let, let Kirito know exactly where he was. But now we see that like when he was firing, Kirito bringing out those awesome sword skills of his, we saw him, you know, deflecting those bullets and that right there was impressive because I definitely knew Kirito had the skills and when he got in close and just, you know, impaled that guy, you just, you just heard him, you know, screaming in pain as his health went down. It's not like that right there, you know, was like an instant kill and this guy was like really suffering. So obviously, you know, Kirito won, but that right there was a bit draining on him. And we see now that when he actually, you know, go goes out to the, uh, like, like back to the place where the other players are, we actually see Sinon's friend. Like, he's, like, watching one of the matches, but Kirito was, like, wondering, you know, like, what's going on with, uh, with Sinon's match. But, but before he could find her, we see now that, like, Death Gun, he appears out of nowhere, and I was just so surprised to see him because I thought that like he, that I thought, I thought that right there was like a Sinon's friend. I did not think you know it, it would it would be you know like another person. But now we have this gun asking Kirito over and over again if he's the real thing, and and we actually learn like you know thanks thanks to Kirito like Kirito's brilliant deduction. We learn now that like Death Gun, he is actually a player from like SAO. He is like one of those survivors, and, and he definitely knows Kirito. But Kirito was like was trying to figure out so hard who could Death Gun be, 
and we see now that like while while we're trying to figure it out, Def Gun actually made this mistake because both my like, most of the body is covered up with like the bandages, and of course you know he wears that mask. But we see now that like now all of him was covered and a marking you know with axe on his arm, and that marking right there brought back some memories for uh for Kirito. And at first, you know, I was, I was trying to like figure out, you know, like what uh what that marking meant. I kind of I kind of had to go look it up, but it's actually you know laughing laughing coffin, and that right there, you know, maybe maybe remember everything because like at first I because at first I had no idea what it was, but thanks me looking up, I now remembered. So it seems that like Def Gun, he like like back in Sao, he was a player killer, and so I do wonder, you know, like how a guy like that is now just something like this, but because he's a Part of, you know a laughing coffin and because you know he is somehow killing players you know in real life I would not be surprised if this guy right here was actually the leader of laughing coffin back in SAO but that right there you know was a bit surprising and, and I do hope that you know that like Kirito will expose him for who he is soon but like I said the episode like we did get a pretty good fight but overall it was pretty simple so I'm gonna probably give it an 8 out of 10 but of course I would love to hear your guys thoughts on this and as always, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe because that really helps me out. And you guys take it easy. And I will see you all next time.